Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another lecture by the Douglasville class. This is a school and not a church, and you're going to be affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and his eternal purpose operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder. Dr. Henry Clifford Kennedy in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Douglasville branch was established in 2014. At this time, I'd like to introduce you to school officials. The treasurer is Dr. Todd Renshaw, and the superintendent is Dr. Rhonda Seals Palm. In this school, we use the true, correct, original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. And the name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title. But unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the... I'm sorry, did I skip something? That means, no. Unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that the Creator chose for himself. Mm -hmm. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in the dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters in our alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1,400 years after the Messiah's death making such names as Jesus and Jehovah and possible renderings of our Heavenly Father in His Son's name. Mm -hmm. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Mm -hmm. Now Yahweh is pure spirit mm -hmm. and in this state He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized on our charts as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of the charts to show you that everything on the charts are within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within a pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now, Yahweh, knowing that man cannot perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word of Son. A superincorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of his name and title. They began by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in the school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. We call it the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses to top Mount Sinai and showed him his tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court that goes round the back. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof how that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the threefold structure and function of the tabernacle pattern. And that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Mm -hmm. The primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First, 
to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah with the, without the distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers laid in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh. Eternal and purpose. Eternal purpose of Yahweh through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or <coughs> Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation of faith, which was once delivered unto the sons and children of Yahweh. Nine, to make known Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, save in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And ten, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Mm -hmm. Our watchword is peace, mm -hmm. and our slogan is to speak the truth. At this time, we'll have class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Deborah Williams. Then we'll have our scripture lesson read, Isaiah, the 13th chapter, by Dr. Patrick Latorti. And then we have our prayer. Heavenly Father Yahweh, we are gathered here today before you to learn of you as you really is and actually exist. We ask that you open our eyes and open our ears so that we may hear. You speak through the speakers and learn of you. This we ask in your precious son's name. Yahshua the Messiah. Maybe I will say. Hallelujah. All right. Good evening. I will be reading out of the King James Version of the Bible, but I will insert the true names where appropriate. This is Isaiah, the 13th chapter. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah, the son of Amos, did see. Lift ye up a banner of upon the high mountain, exalt the voice unto them, shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones, I have also called my mighty ones for my name, even them that rejoice in thy highness. The noise of a multitude in the mountains like, a, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. Yahweh of hosts mustered, mustered the hosts of, a of the battle. They come from a far country, from the ends of heaven, even Yahweh, and the weapons of his indignation, to destroy the whole land. How ye, for the day of Yahweh is at hand, it shall come as destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. And they shall be afraid, pains and sorrows shall take hold of them, and they shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another, their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of Yahweh come, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not, shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil, and for the, and for the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than a golden wage of Ophir. Therefore will I will shake the heavens and the earth. I'm sorry, let me read that again. Therefore will I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of Yahweh of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. And it shall be as the chaste robe 
and as the sheep that no man taketh up, they shall every man turn to his own people, and flee every one into his own land. Every one that is found shall be thrust through, and every one that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled, their wives ravished. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, which shall not regard silver. And as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bowls also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children, and Babylon, the glory of kingdom, and the beauty of the Chaldeans' excellency shall be when Yahweh overthrow Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall, not, it shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch tents there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. But wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there. And and stay there, and, oh, and say it, shall dance there, and the wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate houses, and the dragons in their pleasant palaces, and her time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. That was Isaiah the thirteenth chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, we the scripture readers for today will be Dr. Deborah Williams. And for our first speaker, it's an honor and a pleasure to call on Dr. Rhonda Seals Palm. Every single minute of your life 
and you can talk to him and you don't have to call nobody on the phone. Mm -hmm. You go right within him and speak with him and he speaks with you. Mm -hmm. My favorite place is to talk to the Father is in the shower. He reveals some wonderful things to me in the shower. Um, and I kind of find that like my meeting place with him. And I'm so thankful and I'm so humble. And I can't say that I'm going to be up here long, but I have to give a testimony to that that he has shown to me. And I want to start off with the definition of why we come down here. Can you pick me up in John 17 chapter, please? John 17. So start at 1 and let's read on down um, to about the third verse. This is John mm -hmm. 17 and 1. Mm -hmm. These words spake Yahshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thou son also may glorify thee. Excuse me, because I will be kind of coming in and out, okay? Mm -hmm. So now, some background to this story. Here it is. You have Joshua the Messiah, and he is in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he's there the night before he's crucified, crucified, excuse me, and he's praying a prayer right within himself, and he's asking the Father for the glory that he had, you see what I'm saying, way back here before the natural earth, the natural world came into play, read. And thou hast given him power. And thou hast given him power over all flesh. Stop. He said he gave him power over all flesh. That he may do what? That he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Stop right there. So he, he who, Yahshua, you see what I'm saying? Who is the Holy Spirit? He may give life eternal, you see what I'm saying, to as many as what? <laughs> thou hast given him. Who is the thou? You see what I'm saying? He's talking about the Father. This is Father and Son. You see what I'm saying? The Word or Son. And we have it up here depicted. You see what I'm saying? Yahweh is the Father. Elohim, the Word or Son. And he's also Yahshua. And as you see it here, you see what I'm saying? One, two, three, or A, B, C. There is three or one. And we can pick that up in in First John 5 and 7 where he defines, you see what I'm saying? Him and the Father one, but don't go there yet, okay? We're going to work with this chapter just a little bit because this is what the Father is showing me. He may give life eternal to as many as the Father has given him. So that means that we don't get to pick and choose whether or not if we're going to have life eternal because before you even know anything about life eternal, you thought it was heaven. You said, oh, heaven. But then we find out after being in this school that there was a war in heaven. You see what I'm saying? And there's a war in heaven right now going on. You see what I'm saying? There's a, always a war going on within your body, within your heart and mind. You see what I'm saying? Yahshua was telling you one thing. Lucifer said the devil, he's trying to tell you another. You see what I'm saying? But you have to learn to hear his voice. You see what I'm saying? And learn to discern. What are you discerning? You are discerning or you deflecting the fiery darts of the adversary. You see what I'm saying? We come here for life eternal. Read on. And this is life eternal. And this is life eternal. And he was speaking to the Father right within himself. Read on. That they might know thee, mm -hmm. the only true Elohim. He said he's the only true Elohim. The only true. And that he has power over all flesh. That's the spiritual flesh, and that's the natural flesh. Because, see, we thought it was just one type of flesh. Coming down here, you learn that there is a difference. Read on. And Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. This is life eternal, that they may know. And we know now, if you're reading in the dictionary, know means to have an intimate relationship with. You see what I'm saying? Intimate. You know some intimate things about him. He makes known his ways unto you. Read on. 
4. I have glorified thee on the earth. Mm -hmm. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Mm -hmm. And now, O oh Father, glorify, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. All right. So you see, here it is. He said he has finished the work. You see what I'm saying? Now that he may be glorified. You see what I'm saying? He may glorify, and we will be glorified with him. You see what I'm saying? I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that. Read on, just a little bit more, because there's something I want to pull out of there. Okay, this is six. Mm -hmm. I have manifested thy name unto the men mm -hmm. which thou gavest me out of the world. The ones that the Father gave unto him out of the world. So it's not that you get to choose. You see what I'm saying? We don't get to choose that. He chose us. You see what I'm saying? And there's nothing, I'm going to put it on myself. There's nothing that I could have done. Nothing. Not yesterday, today, future. Nothing that I could have done. You see what I'm saying? To choose this. He had to choose me. And he did that before the foundation of the world. You see what I'm saying? Our steps are order, and that's hard to be. That's hard to understand sometimes. You see what I'm saying? That the Father, He chose us, y'all. He chose us, and He chose us by name. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And that's the most important thing. See, you don't go down to. Well, I'm gonna go down here to this church. You see what I'm saying? Because I choose them. I like how they sound. They look good. You know, their building is phenomenal. No, 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 no. Listen, when I tell you, this teaching, I cry daily because I'm so humble. I'm so humble and I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful to the Father. And I'm thankful for the brethren mm -hmm. because, you know, we all we have. We are all we have. Now, we might differ in, you know, just fat here, words here and there with one another. But guess what? I ain't gonna let nobody else out there come. You know what I'm saying? And sit here and talk about no, you can't do that. Right. Siblings from a natural standpoint, you might push and pull and uh, but at the end of the day, I love you. You see what I'm saying? And sometimes we have to say some things to each other to remind each other that we have this wonderful gift. You see what I'm saying? I myself and uh, I confided in brother, for the last two years of my life, I feel like I'm not functioning properly. Mm -hmm. I, went, I have gone through something that mentally <coughs> shook my world. Mm -hmm. And I cried out to Yashua, Father, don't let me stay in that state. Don't let me stay in this state. I know that you're with me. You see what I'm saying? But them down with spirits telling you, guess what? You can't help yourself. You can't do this. Look at you now. Look at you now. But you know what I have held on to? You see what I'm saying? Because I started suffering from anxiety attacks, and I'm not ashamed to say it. I work in healthcare, and I have watched this virus do some stuff to people, and I've seen people come in, and some don't believe that it's true, and some don't, and I'm like, you can't even breathe, you can't even call on the name, you see what I'm saying? And I'm watching this, and it got so bad, you see what I'm saying, that I found myself having to go in closets at work, yeah. and I'm breathing, and I'm breathing, you see what I'm saying? Because I'm like, I'm starting to feel anxious. Mm -hmm. This name is what has stabilized me. It's what stabilizes me. You see what I'm saying? It's what's keeping me. It's what's holding me. You see what I'm saying? Because he told his disciples. You see what I'm saying? He, re he rehearsed things in their ears. You see what I'm saying? When you feel it down and it feels like there's no hope, you got to look to Yahshua. You see what I'm saying? Because he gave us what? 1 Corinthians 15 chapter, 
Luke the 24th chapter, he told his disciples back there and beginning at Moses. You see what I'm saying? When you're feeling shaky, you don't know, what are you going to do? Begin at Moses. To the law, to the prophecy. You see what I'm saying? I need to see blood, water, spirit, for it. I need to hear it. I need to see it. You see what I'm saying? It's very important. I can never get tired of hearing this. I can never get tired of hearing him preach that gospel. You see what I'm saying? When I go to bed at night, lay down, and I'm calling on his name. You see what I'm saying? And I'm sorry, I wasn't raised in the morning, Father. It is your will. You see what I'm saying? This is the gospel. So when you find yourself in that state, and I know we some say, oh, that's the basic state. It's powerful. First Corinthians, the first chapter, he said, what is about the foolishness of what? Preaching. You see what I'm saying? And we know that true preaching is teaching. You see what I'm saying? Our founder and dean taught us that. These are the simple things. My baby over there know more than the preacher. You see what I'm saying? She know blood, water, spirit, 40. Death, burial, resurrection. She know that natural sun out there points to the true sun. You see what I'm saying? This simple to them. Listen. It sounds simple, but it's profound. Yes, it is. It is so profound because, again, like I said, I have been in a death and a burial state. You see what I'm saying? And thinking, oh, Father, I can't, I, I know I can't get out of it. That it silenced me. And he taught me to be still. Be still and hear him right here. You see what I'm saying? Listen. And he has gone back over these things because guess what? They've been rehearsed in my ears. This is the language that I know. So when I hear and see someone, which we know flesh can't do it, you see what I'm saying? Saying something different, I can't understand you. Just like we sons speak a heavenly language, they can't understand us. You see what I'm saying? So, pick up that first Corinthians for me. First Corinthians 15 and 1. Thank you. Moreover, brother, mm -hmm. I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, okay. and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that the Messiah died for our sins, according to the scriptures. According to the scriptures. And see, in this school, we have learned what those scriptures are. See, we thought anything that was written was scripture, but it is not. You see what I'm saying? We have the scriptures, the first five books of the Bible. You see what I'm saying? Being the law. You see what I'm saying? Then we have the prophecy. You see what I'm saying? Equaling 39 books or one volume. You see what I'm saying? To the law and to the prophecy. You see what I'm saying? That is your foundation in this teaching. It's going to give you strength in this teaching. Because now you know how to see your father continuously overturning and overturning and overturning his his. His, his purpose so that I can understand. You see what I'm saying? So I was able to see this because he constantly does it. I know we're in spring, so I'm looking for things to renew. Right. You see what I'm saying? That establishes your faith. When I hear those birds singing at 5 o'clock in the morning, that's beautiful to me. Mm -hmm. Singing praises unto his name. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And this is something... I don't want to ever take for granted. That's right. I always want to be able to hear myself breathing that name. Hear you breathing that name. Mm -hmm. Knowing that we're walking that name. You see That's what right. I'm saying? That's that right. ocean. Yeah. But this is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. When you stop and think about all of the witnesses, and that's Romans 1, 19. It's when he gave us something that we could relate to so that we could see him. We could not understand him in this state. He knew this. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? That's why he had to take on shape and form. 
You see what I'm saying? It's this incorporeal being. You see what I'm saying? And then come low on our level. You see what I'm saying? To talk to you and I so that we can learn to go within and talk to him. You got to see it outside first. Then he brings it on into you. And this story down here, and you know, we talk about Moses and we talk about Moses and we talk about Moses. And I remember when I first came and I said, wow, we always talk about Moses. Didn't understand. But one day, I had a light bulb moment. I said, this really does take my picture. Because you in a death state, you in darkness if you don't know Yahweh. He that called who? What's the definition of heaven that called us to exist whatever exists. Thank you. I appreciate This is school. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And I'm telling y'all, I don't function like the Rhonda that functioned two years ago. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And I'm not afraid to say that. Right. You see what I'm saying? The only reason why I'm standing here now is because the Father has had mercy on me. You see what I'm saying? And he didn't flip me over because it's a thin line. You see what I'm yeah, saying? Man, it's yes, a it very is. thin line. Yes, it is. When you have dumb down the spirit sitting there telling you, go and kill yourself. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And I hear my father say, hold on, we ain't got too much longer. You see what that's I'm saying? Right. That's right. Because that's where we are. And for you to go out and tell somebody that out there in the world, well, you know, I think maybe you need to get some psychiatric help. No. I'm here. I'm in the institute. This is the help. You see what I'm saying? Right. This is the help. And I'm not afraid to say it. These are things that I, I, I try to hide. But I'm not afraid to talk about it because this right. is the power. That's he got power over all flesh. You see what I'm saying? To keep old wretched Rhonda in line. You see what I'm saying? Keeping this gospel in remembrance so that I know to the law, to the testimony, and beginning at Moses. This was not some small thing that took place back here. You know, we talk about it. We go into it. This is not a small thing. I was talking to a brother, and I said, you think it was a small thing that when you got a little small baby, you understand, and your baby telling you that they're thirsty, all the water was turned to blood? Lice. Flies. Moraine. And the children of Israel had to suffer through three. Why? Because you got to believe. Except you see signs and wonders, you cannot believe. I needed a sign to tell me how to get here tonight. I didn't know how to just drive here. I had to have some directions to get here. You see what I'm saying? So he, listen, we see that rap going on right now. And these people just sleep. They blissfully ignorant. You see what I'm saying? And I'm not talking about these people, but I feel bad for them because they do not have anything or can't keep it. Even though they're saying they believe in God and Lord and this, they don't have a way to prove it. We have a way to prove it. Right. You see what I'm saying? We have a tabernacle. You see what I'm saying? You be in the tabernacle, we find out that guess what? What is a tabernacle? A temporary movement for the soul and then in some books it says especially the human body you see what I'm saying so you had something to look at that points to where to the true tabernacle right here he's tabernacling with us you see what I'm saying so to be reminded of that salvation that was delivered onto this group of people that was in bondage you see what I'm saying he had to pour out some plagues. You see what I'm saying? He had to execute judgment on those gods back there. You see what I'm saying? Before I thought, oh, he's just pouring out this. You didn't realize that he was tearing down the gods back there. He's tearing down gods right now. You see what I'm saying? That money god done fell down here. You see what I'm saying? That's why you got people out there right now robbing and killing. You see what I'm saying? You can't buy the food. You can't pay your rent. You can't buy food and rent. And they don't care. They do not care. Don't demonic spirits sitting out there in them bodies? Listen, 
they want their money. And if you can't deliver it to them, they will put you out with your children. You see what I'm saying? All your belongings on the street. See, you don't want to fall into the hands of man. Ever. And I'm so thankful to know that this story took my picture, that I had to see myself coming from one state to the next. And I'm thankful to Yashua. I'm thankful to have anything to say about the teaching, even a little inkling. But what I want you to know that today is April 14th. This is April 14th. And back there, in order for them to pass from one state to the next, they had something that they had to do. Mm -hmm. Exodus, the 12th chapter, please. Now see, Moses was given a name back here at the burning bush. Or in other words, he received a divine vision. Right. And revelation, you see what I'm saying, directly from our creator. He was given a name. He was given some signs to establish his faith. You see what I'm saying? And his brother Aaron comes out to meet him. Just hold that one second because I want to catch up all the way up, okay? That wasn't even a small thing that here it is. This man walks up out of Egypt. You see what I'm saying? Out of bondage. Comes out here and knew exactly where to meet his brother Moses. You see what I'm saying? This man came out here at 40 years of age. He's now 80 years of age. Another 40 denoting a change. And according to the migratory pattern, he is in the what? But on our pattern, he's, he's in the holy place, right? Mm -hmm. So he's out here. He's receiving a divine vision. Him and his brother come on down like the law and the prophets. And they deliver the message, let's put it that way, to Pharaoh. Pharaoh says, what? I know not. We know being now in this class to know. You see what I'm saying? That's like eternal is to know. You see what I'm saying? Not to I think or maybe, but it is to know. He said he didn't know. You see what I'm saying? So as a result, those plagues was poured out. And every time he had to come on back to Moses, Moses, you tell your God to take it off. You see what I'm saying? Why your God can't do it? That you got to come back to me. You see what I'm saying? So you knew that it had to be something different about the message with this man is being used to deliver. You see what I'm saying? So now, the children of Israel, or the Israelites, only, not the Egyptians, they was given a way of escape down here. Okay? Pick up Exodus, the 12th chapter. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speaking unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of the month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. Every man got to make their account for the eating of the lamb. And we now know, he said, this is the first month to you, right? Mm -hmm. Pick up what that, um, what that month is. 13, 13, 13 and 4, 13. please. Hold on. 13 mm -hmm. and 4. And then we're going to bounce right back over there, okay? Thank this you. is 13 and 4. Thank you. This day came ye out in the month of Abib. Abib. And then we found that Abib is equivalent to our April. You may see uh, Abib or Nisan, which is equivalent to our April. So we are in April right now. And they were instructed to take out that lamb on the 10th, hold it over for four days. Today, that would make that the 14th. So today is April the 14th. And we are standing here and we are what? Partaking of the lamb. Right? right? Mm -hmm. Read on. Your lamb shall be without blemish, mm -hmm. a male of the first year. Mm -hmm. He shall take it out from the sheep or from the goat. From the sheep or from the goat. 
Can someone look up the word lamb for me, please? See, we are partaking, and every one of us may, must make our account for the lamb. You see what I'm saying? And that's what we're doing here today. See, they were given away of the state. And then we're going to find out that this lamb has great significance. Let's, let, let's, do we have the definition for it yet? I have a uh, lamb out of the Merriam-Webster's Dictionary. Thank you. Which would be a young sheep. Mm -hmm. uh, one that is less than one year old or without permanent teeth. Uh, the young of various animals such as a, the smaller antelopes other than sheep. A gentle or quote weak person. Deer, pet, a person easily cheated on or, or deceived, mm -hmm. especially for trading security. I bet it's different with that deceived. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Ain't no deceiving. See, he is the lamb. That lamb that was slain from the foundation. Ain't no deception there. You can't deceive him. Mm -hmm. Do we have some synonyms? Because we did get yes. gentle. Yes, yeah, so let me do that. We have synonyms mm -hmm. and they. Oh, wait, we got angel. Angel. Dove. Dove. Innocent. Innocent. Sheep. Sheep. Mm -hmm. All right. And what happened down here? You see what I'm saying? We talk about that dove. Oh, boy, I can't see. Where's the crap on here? Uh, Where's John at? Really? John the Baptist. You see what I'm saying? Y'all know I can't what see. You get up here and you can't see. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, what, I can't see. Well, John, go to the Moses chart. Go to the Moses Church. Oh, yes. So much <laughs> okay, here we are. You see what I'm saying? And then we have John back here. See what I'm saying? Baptizing what? Them dead Jews back there, right? And it said that what? The dog. It, 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 it sat upon him, it said, but it didn't say that it was a dog, right? Mm -hmm. Type and shadow. And then here it is. You got the, you have that 120. Mm -hmm. Do y'all know that I sat at work on Tuesday? I was sitting there, and the father showed me this special session right here. And you know what? He took me back to the 120 sitting in the upper room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That dove. Can we? Let us read that. I want you to pick up, because we, we prove all things down here. We don't just be talking, okay? So John, where it says that dove ascended, right? Read that part for me, and then I want you to pick up Acts. I'm going to go to Matthew, uh, Matthew 316. 316, thank you. And Yahshua, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the spirit of Elohim descended like a dove, and mm -hmm. lightning upon him, and lo, a voice out of from heaven saying, This is my beloved son, and whom I am well pleased. Well pleased. And that definition said, what does some of them say, an angel? Mm -hmm. Dove. Dove. Innocent. Innocent. And dove. Uh, Taking out that innocent cheek, you see what I'm saying? Less than, less than a year old, innocent. We read that it's gentle. You see what I'm saying? Some books say meek. I've even read it where it said a meek, humble person. You see what I'm saying? You're going to find that out. And then you're talking about an angel. This is that angel. You see what I'm saying? That angel. Now, you see what I'm saying? This is, this is typifying. Man, this is so, this, this is beautiful. And see, this is something that the children of Israel had to do down there. So we just picked up Matthew 3 and 16. Let's pick up Acts, and we're going to go right back here afterwards. But I just want to point out that dove since we, we talked about it. Acts 2 and 1? Yes. Mm -hmm. Acts 2 and 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, mm -hmm. they were all with one accord in one place. Mm -hmm. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Yes. And it filled all the house where they were in sitting. In the house. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it was set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them, gave them utterance. utterance. Mm -hmm. 
Now, shouldn't we be speaking according to how the Spirit give us utterance? Mm -hmm. Not our concept and opinion, how we feel right. about the thing. Right. See, Satan loves to work with your emotions and your yes, feelings. He yes, he does. You see what I'm saying? That's what he loves to get. Now, you know that wasn't right, what you said. But wait. My father said to belong to the testimony and beginning at Moses. You see what I'm saying? And it might, and he said what? The word of Yahweh is sharper than any two edged sword, cutting down to what? Yeah, bone yeah, and bone. bone. So when we speak, you see what I'm saying? We're speaking in other tongues. You see what I'm saying? And it's cutting and it's burning. You see what I'm saying? There are some things that are taking place when we preach this gospel according to how he set it up. So see, these children of Israel came out by the blood of the Lamb. You see, so they were delivered. When that death angel saw it, he said, that's a token. He's going to pass over. You see what I'm saying? Now Pharaoh down there. You see what I'm saying? He suffered the death of his firstborn, and there was a cry down there. You see, mm -hmm. Yahweh devastated that land. Mm -hmm. It's not even right to this day. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? It's still a Stench. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Many people have given this witness. I've even had people that I've talked to from those countries and they say it's always a stench. They told me themselves, not understanding or knowing why I'm asking, you know, what's different between here and there. And they, they begin to say these things to me. Mm -hmm. Now here it is. The children of Israel, they coming out. You see what I'm saying? By their blood. Then they come out here to the Red Sea, okay? They coming out, they coming through the water. You see what I'm saying? The departed waters of the Red Sea, it rolled up on a heap. In other words, coming to Yah, and that wind came through sure. You see what I'm saying? Following the cloud. You see what I'm saying? And they resurrect out here into the wilderness. You see what I'm saying? And they were out here, thank you. And they stayed out here for what? 40 years. And when they got out here, Yahweh had to teach them how to serve him. Right. Mm -hmm. They had no idea. You see what I'm saying? See, the world will tell you, oh, I became saved on this day at this time. <laughs> on the, how and when do you know that? But they're the biggest liars, yeah. biggest cheat, and they're going to throw the Ten Commandments down your throat, preach it to you day and night. Oh, hey, this is that. But yet, you don't already <coughs> broke the first one because. When they got out here, they was told to wash up and clean up. See, Yahweh has to wash us and cleanse us, and you're not going to like everything you hear. It's painful. Right. You see what I'm saying? He's got to burn out that carnality. He got to. He has to baptize you in the name. You see what I'm saying? Not names, because this is one name. You see what I'm saying? He's going to baptize you, teach you how to worship Him. In spirit and truth. You see what I'm saying? Because you can't do it on your own. You may want to do it, but you can't do it without him. Right. He mm -hmm. has to do it. Mm -hmm. Listen, first, can you pick up the first commandment that he made unto him? Yeah, it's Exodus 20. Thank you. See, so you get up here and forget. <laughs> can't even see the charts. You see what I'm saying? But that's okay. Because ain't no life eternal in that. You see what I'm saying? I do this. I, this is a school. If I can't see it, I know where it is. You do. You can help me. You see what I'm saying? This is. This is uh, oh, go ahead. This is Exodus, Exodus 21. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh spake all these words, saying, I am Yahweh thy Elohim which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. out of the house of bondage, thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's right. Now, can you just imagine? <laughs> can you just imagine hearing that? You see what I'm saying? They couldn't take it. You see what I'm saying? But he told them. Right. You see what I'm saying? You should have no other Elohim, no other gods before me. And they broke it. Mm -hmm. They couldn't keep it. On your marriage night, mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? And your bride done committed adultery already. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. Worshiping other gods. Mm -hmm. You know darn well that this this bull, this, this didn't bring you out. 
Right. If anywhere, you see what I'm saying? But though they're out here in the wilderness, you see what I'm saying? And and he devastated that land, and you've witnessed all of the power. I ain't gonna say all the power, let me take that back. Just a small ink of Yahweh's power. Mm. You see what I'm saying? But he devastated that land. And you witness all of that, but you come out here and you dance and prance all around this golden calf. You see what I'm saying? Let this be the God that brought us out here. I don't worship it. That's what's going on right now. You right. see what I'm saying? Idols. Mm -hmm. Though you see things going on, they see things going on. Yahweh calls you to tell them about this teaching. You talk to them about it. They ask you questions, but boy, let me tell you, when they ask you something that they don't want to hear, <laughs> they quickly shun you. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. they start preaching, Lord God, even harder to you. <laughs> but you don't show them, you've given to them the witnesses that the Father has given to you using their book, mm -hmm. using their physical body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they still want to come back and say, look at God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is what I can only show up for you. And he show up for you as if you summoned him to do a thing for you. You see what I'm saying? But he, he said that his name is Yahweh. You see what I'm saying? For now and forever. You see what I'm saying? Well, that's it. This is the old... That's an old name. It doesn't change. My name is the same wherever I go. Ain't no power in my name, but it's power in that name. That's you see right. what I'm saying? He and the devastated nations over his name. He, where's that scripture over there? He said that he had pity for what? He said he had pity his for the people. Mm -hmm. He said for his holy name's mm -hmm. sake. You see what I'm saying? Not for the people, but for his holy name. See, Israel, they received it. And they went out here, man, for their lack of belief. They died out here. You see what I'm saying? Couldn't even understand that he gave you an inheritance. You didn't do nothing for it. All you needed to do was believe. And that's why yet today, we have that scripture. Look again there. Okay. Where he, he had pity for his holy name. That's why... This is what's going on right now. Right now. But you know they still don't believe. Because God is good. But now understanding that his wrath is as great as his love. You see what I'm saying? When they danced and pranced around this golden calf, you see what I'm saying? Moses came out that ground, called out. You see what I'm saying? His minister. You see what I'm saying? Yahoo sure called him out and said he heard a noise of war. You see what I'm That's saying? Right. The people that you brought out here, they have profaned themselves, right? Now, I might be saying it wrong, but we can read it. Thank I you. I have uh, Ezekiel 36, 22. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, mm -hmm. thus saith Yahweh Elohim, mm -hmm. I do not do this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the heathen when you went. Right. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, mm -hmm. which you have profaned in the midst of them and the heathen, and the heathen shall know that I am Yahweh. And they Yahweh. shall know. Didn't the heathens find out down here? You see what I'm saying? I know not. You see what I'm saying? And that wrath, and he said, for this very cause that I raise him up. So he should what? Show forth his power. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? His power. See, he's doing it for his name. He has to be glorified. And then you got Yahshua coming on the scene down there. Oh, my goodness. Get me over there where he said, when he's praying that prayer, and he's saying, Father, is that Matthew? Mm -hmm. I think that's Matthew, what, the 10th chapter? Is that Matthew over there, 10? Where he says that, Father... He's praying to the Father, and he's saying, "I thank you for hearing me, right?" <laughs> and I also want where he, um, where he said, "I come in my Father's name." One minute. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> it does work. Hopefully. I'm sorry. He's doing it. He's doing it for His name. He is to receive the glory, not a man, no woman. I mean, nobody. You see what I'm saying? His name. 
Okay. This is John uh, 5, Five verse 3. Okay. Thank you. And, I'm still looking and I am come in my father's name. Mm -hmm. You receive me not. Yes. Let another come in his own name, and him you will receive. Him you will receive. See, the whole world, you see what I'm saying? Though we have declared this name. And I'm going to tell you, they will tell you that, oh, yeah, we know the name is Yahweh. But baby, when you talk to them about Yahshua, oh, no. No, that could not possibly be. <laughs> Listen, they were even, they even get, they're so slick now. I just saw recently where a gentleman actually had this name up here, had this, uh, matter of fact, he had this name. And he said that this name meant uh, Yahweh is salvation. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Is this what you wanted? <laughs> 10 <and> 10 <laughs> And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. For my name's sake. That's a beautiful one, but nope, that wasn't it. But it, it's on time. Read, read it, and then I'm going to have my seat. And he shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Mm -hmm. But he that endureth to the end mm -hmm. shall be saved. Shall be saved. So you know there's some power here. You see what I'm saying? And because of their disobedience and they broke the commandment, you see what I'm saying? That line was drawn and they saying, all them that's on Yahweh's side, come on over here, all them that's not, you see what I'm saying? And it was what, 3,000 that fell out there that day? Don't get me wrong, it was 3,000, yes, right? Was you see right, what I'm saying? Right there, Guess what? He ain't tell nobody to come down there and discuss it and say, <laughs> hey, why did you know? They failed because they broke the commandment. See? That moment in a twinkling of an eye. You see what I'm saying? If you don't know this name, if that spirit ain't in you, you're going to be just like what they suffered back there, all of them that was uh, disobedient and broke that commandment. Mm. Uh, and I'm going to stop. My time is up. But I thank you for just giving me a, a just a moment to say anything. It's It's a pleasure. And if you received anything, all honor and pleasure goes on to Yahshua, Messiah, Holy Spirit. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> all right. For our next speaker, it's an honor and pleasure to call on Dr. Patrick Latorsky. Good evening. Uh, I hope you uh, were able to listen to the previous speaker on, and she stopped that to go for the cap, so we might as well get that. Uh, that's Exodus, the 32nd chapter. Uh, but, uh, but, but I need to backtrack just a little bit because uh, as, as was coming through the previous speaker, see, remember, Yahweh married the children of Israel here in the land of, and, and in, the, in the wilderness of Sinai. So if you could get me Exodus 24 chapter, and uh, you can start at the first verse and uh, go from there, then we'll, we'll try to go through it. Because see, I also want to get to the point where uh, in Ezekiel 36, 25, I remember he did this according to, because of his namesake. See, because the Israelites which was supposed to be a light unto the Gentiles, uh, profane Yahweh's name. So it's not a surprise that in the fulfillment when Yahshua the Messiah begins his ministry, that 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 the scribes and the Pharisees already profane Yahweh's name because they changed it. You understand with those diacritical marks with Yahweh, and instead of and instead of you know saying the name of Yahweh, now they say the name of Adonai, which technically means what you're saying is that you're denying the name of Yahweh. See, you understand? And that's what was happening there, see? Because remember, the priesthood changed the name of Yahweh to Adonai, and that's somewhere, I believe, it's in Malachi, when he said, to O ye priests that despise my name, this is what I'm going to do unto you. Uh, but let's go back to uh, Exodus 24, chapter 24 and 1, and go all the way down. 
This is Exodus 24 and 1. Go ahead. And he said unto Moses, mm -hmm. Come up unto Yahweh, mm -hmm. thou and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, mm -hmm. and seven of the elders of Israel, Read. and worship ye afar off. You know what? Go to the first verse before you do that, before before we get to Yah before they saw Yahweh Elohim, you see. Because remember, they they remember they said. The children of Israel said, after the law was spoken down under them, they said that all that Yahweh said we were what? Do and be what? Be obedient. And we want to show that, like the previous speaker said, that in less than 40 days' time, they disobeyed Yahweh. So start at the first verse, and then we'll get to, uh, uh, okay, we'll get to uh, 24 and 1. Just start at 24 and 1. We'll, get, we'll work that. Okay. Back again, 24 and 1. Yeah. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto Yahweh, thou and Aaron, may they have abide the Bible, seventy of the elders of Israel, mm -hmm. and worship ye afar off. Mm -hmm. And Moses alone shall come near Yahweh. Mm -hmm. But they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go gotcha. up with him. So the people down here, you got the elders and the 73 here, you have Moses up here. So, so they were at the plateau, but keep going, breathe. And Moses came and told the people all the words of Yahweh and all the judgments. Yeah, they told all the words of Yahweh and all the judgments. Read. And all the people answered with one voice and said, mm -hmm. All the words which Yahweh have said. Listen, all the words that Yahweh have said we will do. And what? We will do. Mm -hmm. So that sounds like an I do moment. That sounds like marriage. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, read. And Moses wrote, wrote all the words of Yahweh and mm -hmm. rose up early in the morning and built an altar under the hill. Go ahead. And trail pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Go ahead. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, mm -hmm. which offered burnt offerings and sacrifices, mm -hmm. and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in and put it in basins. Mm -hmm. And half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Mm -hmm. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. Mm -hmm. And they said, All that Yahweh have said will we do and be obedient. Now you now hear that? They said that all that Yahweh said, who is the husband, say, all that Yahweh said we will do and be obedient. That's what they said. Keep going. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people. Now he sprinkled it on the people. And said, mm. Behold, the blood of the covenant, mm. which Yahweh hath made with you concerning all these words. Read. Then went up Moses and Aaron. Then went up Moses and Aaron. They happened to buy him and the seventy elders, and they saw the yellow hill of Israel, as it were, a paved work. As it, as it were the body of heaven in its clearness. And remember, he was upon the paved work of a sapphire star, and that the body of heaven was in its clearness. And they saw Elohim and did what? Did eat and drink. Also, they, they saw Elohim, and Elohim did not lay there his hands upon the what? The, 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 the 73 that were down here. But he told Moses to come on up. And after that, but when Moses came on up, you understand what I'm saying? He saw the seven days of creation, see? And then the next 33 days, he saw the what? He saw the workings of this what? tabernacle pattern. But my point is, is that they said, I, we will do and be obedient. Say, and, <laughs> and then came the 32nd chapter of Exodus. Okay. Moses went up on his mount. You understand? He knew he was up there for 40 days and 40 nights. Mm -hmm. You understand? But I want you to get that 32nd chapter. See? First verse. Exodus 32 and 1. Go ahead. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mountain. Stop. When the people saw that Moses delayed. Now you see what's in that mind? Uh-uh, this man. Right. Way ain't down here yet. Where yet? Where is this man Moses? That supposedly led us out of the land of Egypt, which it, was it, was it really wasn't him. But go ahead, read, read, read. This is what the people... Or that one body said, read. The people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto Wait him, a minute, they gathered themselves in the Aaron. Here it comes. Keep on. And said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, mm. the man. The man? Read. Brought us up out of the land of Egypt. Now hold it, right there. See, you see the problem? He said, Moses, the man. Brought us up out of the land of Egypt. We want not. Hold it. I need for you to go back to Exodus, the, 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 the 14th chapter. And I want to add about the ninth verse. Mm -hmm. I'm going to work y'all. 
this morning, y'all. Won't work, y'all. Go to 14 and 9, and let's find out who delivered who delivered what. <laughs> this is Exodus 14 and 9. Go ahead. But the Egyptians pursued after them. Now the Egyptians pursued after them, read. All the horses and chariots of Pharaoh. And 600 horses, horses, 600 chariots, 600 men, read. And his army. And Great. they took them in camp by the sea. Go ahead. Beside Phi. Hi. Yeah, 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 go ahead, Skip it. I know what you're talking about. Go ahead, read. Baal Zephon. Mm hmm, read. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. Read on. And they were so afraid. And they were so afraid, afraid because they saw Pharaoh coming, coming towards them. Remember now, y'all. Now, y'all, we did tell Moses down there that he would harden and what? Soften Pharaoh's heart, see? So he hardened Pharaoh's heart. Pharaoh comes after, here comes the impossible, Pharaoh comes after the children of Israel. They're between two mountains and the, and the Red Sea. No way out. I think that's impossible. You see how impossible it is? But with Yahweh, nothing is what? Impossible. So go ahead, read. And the children of Israel cried unto Yahweh. And they cried unto Yahweh. Read. And they said unto Moses. Now they say unto Moses. Read. Because there were no graves in Egypt. Here we go. Hast thou taken us away to die Here in the go. wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Read. Mm -hmm. Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Read. Let us alone. That she leave us alone. Now, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Hold, hold, hold. You had Egypt devastated with ten devastating plagues. You just had the previous speaker told the Egypt stank. You understand? You got no crops. You got no, you got nothing. You understand? In the land of Egypt. But yet you said, let us, leave us alone. Now here comes the dangerous statement. Go ahead, go ahead, read. That we may serve thee. Now leave us alone so that we may serve them. Really? Really? <laughs> Seriously? Go ahead, keep reading. Go ahead. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians. Hold up. These are the same Egyptians that took the straw away. That's right. <laughs> and, and making you work harder than anything else. Mm -hmm. But it would be better to serve the Egyptians than to die. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, read. The you see what state of mind they're in? Go ahead, read. Then that we should die in the wilderness. Okay, go ahead, read. They haven't even got to the wilderness yet. You're talking about dying in the wilderness. Go ahead, read. And Moses said unto the people, mm -hmm. Fear ye not. Stand still. And see the salvation of Yahweh. Now, what we want you to do in this teaching is not just go through the charts. We want you to apply that that is on the charts. And this is why you know Yahweh or Yahshua the Messiah is the teacher. Because it's not just going through the charts. You are now going to apply it. Why? Because Yahweh through his son Yahshua, will put you in an impossible situation. That's right. In the heart and in the mind. Isn't that the previous speaker talk about anxiety? How you control that? That's in the mind, isn't it? Now what did, what did he say? He said, Stand still. No, oh, no, that's not what he said. Go back up. What's the first thing you're not supposed to do? Yeah. Fear. And Moses fear. said unto the people, Fear ye not. That's one. Stand still. That's two. And see the salvation of Yahweh. And see the salvation of Yahweh. See, this would help if you see the children of Israel as one body or one soul mm -hmm. that is in darkness and is being brought forth out of darkness into the what? Into the light. See, so what does this mean? This is called, this is when you go to, when you go in school, you have to apply those things you learn in school out in life or in the world. Now, in this teaching, we want you to apply that onto the what? That the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding you out of darkness, brings you out here in this wilderness. Tells you the do's and the don'ts, what I like, what I don't like. Mm -hmm. Then he brings you through the divided, divided waters of the River Jordan. Notice that at the divided waters of the River Jordan, there is a throne. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Yeah. There's a throne. 
Nah, you don't see no man there, do you? No. No, there's a throne. Whose throne is that? Yeah. Oh, that's Yahweh. That, that, huh. yeah, the throne of Yahweh okay. that they made in the land of in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And he's bringing you through under the what? Jordan River. That's why when you go into these ages and distance, say, this is how you apply the pattern. When you see the second age, the third age, the fourth age, you got the antediluvian age, post-diluvian age, present kingdom age, and you have what was what would be compared as the court round the Bible. Then you compare this as the holy, holy place. And you compare this as the what? Most holy place. Or better yet, you can do one, two, three, four. There's seven steps in this tabernacle pattern. First step being the gate, second step being the altar of sin sacrifice, third step being the brazen level, labor, fourth step being the door, fifth step being the holy place, sixth step being the veil of the flesh, but the veil of the flesh is that sixth step, and the seventh step being the what? Most holy place. Once you start to apply the pattern, you begin to understand why certain things are working the way they are. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But, it, but, but see, as the previous thing we were talking about, this thing takes your picture. <clears throat> so you were ignorant. You had to follow instructions and eat the lamb. Mm -hmm. Come up out of darkness. Then he tells you the do's and the don'ts. That was the old covenant back there. But see, we are the new covenant. Just as the old covenant dictated to the children of Israel what to wear, who to eat, how, who to marry, what to everything. Mm -hmm. See? And then the old head had to die off at the river what? Jordan, because this group that came up out of here doubted, complained, this, that, that. We don't have no water. We don't have no food. We don't have no this. We don't, and he provided everything for the woman. See? And yet this woman went to the what? Golden calf. Say, Let this be the one. That's a bunch of bull crap. Let this be the one. Say, that brought us out of the land. Show me a calf that delivered you out of the land, out of the land of Egypt. I don't see no calf here. Mm. But you see their belief system. That's right. What they learned from Egypt came up out here as well. So it's not a surprise when you continue to read in the 32nd chapter that Apis showed up. Right. Apis showed up. You heard what I said. I didn't stop. Read the 32nd chapter. Read. Because see, you got to understand why mystery Babylon is being plagued the way it is on this earth plane. Why is that? Because every last, every last belief system or religion is worshiping something other than Yahweh Elohim Himself. That's right. That's right. That's right. We got. Through, I came out of the Roman Catholic Church. What we worship? The Pope. <laughs> Mother Mary was our intercessor. All this other bullshit. You got saints being worshipped. All this. you got saint for the car, saint for the air, saint for the road, saint for the night, saint for the day. Just saints all over the place. Nothing to deal with the intercessor that prayed the prayer. You understand what I'm saying? In the Garden of Gethsemane, that uh, you know, when as the Yahshua lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, "Father, the hour, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son may also what? Glorify thee, that he may give eternal, that he has power over all flesh, that he may give eternal life to as many as thou hast given. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true Elohim, and the only what? True Elohim. Uh oh. That sounds, that sounds like there's some false ones. Yeah. I know you're holding that. Just, just keep holding. You understand what I'm saying? So, see, see, see. So, here comes this false one. Oh, let us make God. Let's make God. And the first thing he said in the 20th chapter of Exodus, he said, I am Yahweh thy Elohim that delivered thee out of the hand, out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no deity before me. That, that is in the heavens above, in the earth, and that that's under the earth. He covered everything. You understand? Don't make any graven images. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But guess what? They made a graven image. Now keep reading what they did. Keep reading what they did. Because this is the woman. They just married Yahweh. Right. And because they looked at a man, oh, we impatient, we yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where you're So let us make a God. Because this man Moses delays in his coming. What else he say? Go back to that chapter. 32nd. 32nd. And they said, Up, uh, our Aaron said unto them, Up, uh, make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this man, for as for, excuse me, 
For as for this Moses, the man mm -hmm. that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. we want not what is to come of him. We don't know what happened to him. Read. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in your ears. Uh oh. Eyes, Here we go. Keep of reading. Your sons and of your daughters. Shoot, take your earrings off, take your sons, take your daughters. That's a lot of earrings. Go ahead, read. <laughs> and bring them unto me. Read, and bring them unto me, read. And all of the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears. Read. And brought them unto Aaron. Read. And he received them at their hands and fashioned it with a graving tool. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Don't make any graven images, but he used the what? Graven tool. Uh-oh, graven tool. Here we go, back in the heart and the mind. You see what's happening in the heart and the mind? Grave and two. You're building something. Go ahead, three. After he had made it a molten calf, mm. and they said, mm. these be the gods. These? They built the golden calf, but they said, these be the gods. Oh, Israel. Oh, Israel. Which brought us up out of the land of Egypt. Show me there's a calf down here. <laughs> you see one? Right. But you see what happened? You see what happened? Because they were impatient. They were impatient. They were impatient. You decided to make up something in your own heart and mind. Because you wouldn't wait on the vision. They get the revelation from the teacher. You make up something in your own mind. Let this be the God that delivered us out of the land of Egypt. This is, the, this is the revelation that delivered me up. You are a fool. Go ahead, read. <laughs> and when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. Oh, he, but not only did they build a cap, they built an altar before it. Read. And Aaron made proclamation. Uh-oh, proclamation time. Sound like the Roman Catholic Church. Have a modern. Here we go. You <laughs> Read. And said, tomorrow is a feast. Oh, tomorrow is a feast. To Yahweh. Now listen now. Does Yahweh look like some haters? <laughs> Not even close. Go ahead and read it then. And they rose up early. They rose up early. On the morrow. On the morrow. And built the burnt offerings. Yes. And offered burnt offerings. Yes. And brought peace of a peace offering. Read. And the people sat down to eat and read. to drink. And they sat down to eat and drink in front of their idol. Whatever it is. And Rose Hollywood Rose stars. <laughs> your president. Your former president. Your pope. It don't make no damn difference. You just party all along. And even if you don't believe in any of that, you have your own carnal mind talking about this is what I'm doing. I'm going to party with it. <laughs> you see my point? You see why we need a savior? And you know that since the entire law they broke for 1,500 years, you know you need a savior. Because that law just told you you need a savior. Because you can't even do this law. Because every time you sin, you have to bring a what? Sacrifice. And if you didn't bring a sacrifice, guess what? You were the sacrifice. That's right. Read on. Hurry up. Come on, finish it. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Didn't they do that in Babylon when they took the vessels of Yahweh and they began to eat and drink and then the finger appeared on the wall? This is it for you, buddy. <laughs> you understand? Don't let me start talking. Read. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Go, get thee down. Mm. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. That means Joshua, the son of Nun, who is truly Yahweh, I mean. Get down there, Moses. They're acting a fool. Go ahead, read. Go, get these down for the people which thou brought us. Now, look, I love the blame game. Look, the people you brought out. The people you brought out, they acting a fool. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. See, but what's the reality of this thing? See, you have a conscience. Man is made of body, soul, spirit. Man is made of body, soul, spirit. Let me do it over here. You got to bring it here. See, man is made of body, soul, spirit. Say, you have an invisible part of you, which is your soul. Say, that's the heart and the mind. And believe me, Yahweh looking at everything but what man is doing in the heart and in the mind before it even manifests on the earth plane. Because he's looking at the mind going, damn, that's dark. <laughs> he's judging the good and the bad. Say, read on. Read on. Well, uh, let's see. Which thou brought us out of the land of 
They corrupted themselves. Read. Where did this corruption come from? Remember that? Remember the garden where Adam and Eve took up the fruit? You understand what I'm saying? That they said of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they told them, now in the day you do thereof, you shall what? Sure they die. You understand what I'm saying? And so guess what happened? They touched it, they ate it, and guess what happened? They sure yeah. would die. That means all the mankind was no longer in peace. They were now carnal minded. You understand what I'm saying? In other words, they were carnal, physical minded. Just as the children of Israel broke the law here, just as the Adam and Eve what? Broke the law there, just as the angels in heaven, Lucifer and his host, broke the law in heaven. He said, worship, honor, and obey Yahweh. But no, Lucifer didn't say that. Lucifer said, no, I'll be above the clouds. You understand? He's a fool. You understand what I'm saying? And he came on and he was cast out of heaven for breaking that law. Right. So Lucifer broke the law. The children of Israel broke the law. Adam and Eve broke the law. They tried to keep this law for 1,500 years because no one could be obedient because their righteousness was as what? Filthy rags, you understand? And Yahshua the Messiah came to the loins of the Virgin Mary, and then at the age of 30 began to preach the gospel unto the unto the people. You understand what I'm saying? And the very people that they, they're calling him Adonai. Remember that they call him Yahweh. They call him Adonai. And he said in Malachi, for all ye priests that despise my name, put I'm telling you, Yahweh cuts them out. You understand what I'm saying? And then that's why he said, I am coming, my father's name. And you receive me not. Let another come in his own name. What? Him you will receive. Now he came from y Yahweh, Yahshua, bearing the masculine portion of his father's name. And Yahshua means Yahweh is what? Salvation. So what are we supposed to do? Fear not. Stand still and see Yahshua the Messiah in our hearts and in our minds. Because he's resurrecting you from death, hell, and the grave in the heart and in the mind. That's why this whole earth plane is nothing but hell running around here. Right. Five minutes. God dog it. See? I got, got too quick. And that is why <laughs> Yahshua had to fulfill the what? The law and the testimony. Move it out the way so that you may begin to receive. Because he said in John 4 and 24 that Yahweh is spirit and he seeketh such to worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. And only the true worshipers can do that. Not no right. false worshipers. True worshipers can only do that. That's why he had to die to death of an outcast dog. And then he poured out the Holy Spirit. You understand what I'm saying? On the Jews first and seven years later on the Gentiles. And Pentecost hasn't stopped yet. That's right. That's right. Get that understood. Say, hasn't stopped yet in this what? Fourth age, you understand? Because now he's resurrected upon the mercy seat with the two angels but with blowing the trumpet. Saying, this is the gospel of the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah. His death, his burial, and his resurrection. And how he did it. And see, now you've got to apply those things to your soul. That's why faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of what? Things not seen. You understand? For without faith, it is impossible to please Yahweh. You understand? Because you have to understand that he is. And he is a rewarder of them that what? Diligently seek him. And in the 36th chapter of Ezekiel, uh, uh, 25th, that then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness. And guess what? From all your idols will I come. And he said all. He didn't say some. He didn't say a little bit. He didn't say, I'll take out 99.9999%. <laughs> he said all. Oh. That's right. And that's what we must depend on because we creatures in the natural have a tendency of making an idol. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me tell you something about this. Remember this sixth dispensation? If you put the growth of man here, that would be likened unto the adolescent stage. You understand what I'm saying? Of this sixth dispensation, because the sixth step is being an adolescent. You understand what I'm saying? What do teenagers do? Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't answered, so let me help you. Don't you have idle football? Football players, cheerleaders. You got to throw the outcast. And you're doing it now. And that's right. That's a Romans 119 and 20. What the heck do you think is going on down here, even in the schools? Yeah. They made an idol. Right. Let this be the one that took us out of the land of Egypt out of the house. You are a fool. <laughs> that's right. You know no man can change your mind that's and give it spiritually and psychologically. That's right. 
That's why you must depend on your parent, who is Yahshua the Messiah, right. to deliver you out of Because I tell you, you tried to do it yourself, you failed. Yeah. 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 I tried. Yeah. Guess what? I failed. Yeah. <laughs> I need help! <laughs> Just like everybody else needs help right here. That's why you have to depend on the Holy Spirit. You understand what I'm saying? Because it's the only way that you can be sitting here in the land of, in the, be, be, be part of that promise. You understand what I'm saying? And be carried over or pass over from the flesh unto the spirit or from the flesh into incorporeal with a spiritual mind. Worshiping Yahweh in spirit and in truth for an eternity. Because if that, your mind does not change, or you don't go from a carnal mind to a spiritual mind, you're going to be some way. You're going to be out the house. Right. Is my point? And it's being out the house. It's going to burn up. You understand? So, I'm going to shut up now. Because I already got wound up, ready to go. Hear my point. Please worship Yahshua the Messiah in your heart and mind. And if you need help, Take that little old mind of yours and go, Yahshua, I need a savior. Can you help me? And I guarantee you, with just a little faith, he'll help. You don't need to depend on me. To call, don't call me. Because I'm in the same state you need. You understand? Know I need a savior. Just like everybody else. So let me shut up so the next speaker can go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening, class. Good evening. It is indeed an honor and a pleasure to be here with you folks here in Douglasville with my stepson to learn more. Yes. Of this great right. and awesome, right. colossal, stupendous mm -hmm. panoramic vision and revelation given to us mm -hmm. by God. We got that one. And I want to read something. I want to have something great. It's a, a, just a little excerpt from a transcript by Dr. Kendall. You want to read okay. this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, you can start. This is the beginning of the lecture here with the. Uh, Oh, the name of the transcript is called Yahweh Elohim. This is the first half. Mm -hmm. That's the name of the transcript. Okay. She's going to read the beginning of this transcript. Okay. okay. Go ahead and read This is Dr. Kelly. Thank you ever so much. I just want to say that I hope that you've gotten something out of that. Mm -hmm. One thing we do try to do down here, we don't just try, we just go ahead and do it. And that is, we point out everything by the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And that removes all doubt. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now, just reading the Bible, I'm back again to that. Just reading the Bible, that don't mean you know anything about it. Okay. I'll tell you just like, okay, this is nice. now listen at what I'm going to say to you. Mm -hmm. Now, what you have to do, what you have to do, and that's what Brother Freddie has done. You have to make these correlations. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't make the correlations, there's nothing you can do about it. Okay. I hope so. Right there. See, now you, you have to make these correlations. Yeah. That's what Dr. Kennedy said. You, you have to make these correlations. That's what, that's what these charts are here for. Mm -hmm. They're here for that. They're not a backdrop for your soliloquy. They're, they're tools to be used and to be used effectively. And, and look, the world knows about the Bible. The world knows about the tabernacle. Dude, I knew about the tabernacle long before I came into this class. I knew about the tabernacle. What I didn't know, that it was a pattern, a divine pattern. That I did not know. But my mom got books on the tabernacle that I grew up reading, you know, because other people, they want to know what's, the Bible's the most widely read book on the planet. That's still for over 500 years. And nobody still don't know what it's about because they haven't, because they have not consulted the author. But keep reading, Dr. Kidman. And I want to tell you something else. Mm -hmm. You must remain a skeptic. You, now, if you don't make these correlations, then you must remain a skeptic. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point of behind this. Go ahead. Until you have some profound knowledge <coughs> of these things, mm -hmm. it's a physical and mental impossibility. 
for you to believe in something you do not know anything about. Now, see, if you don't know anything about this, the pattern, the spirit law, law, if you don't know anything about it, then you can read the Bible and you just, you can pull out of any interpretation you want. That's the world is already done. That's why you have all these different religions, you know, interpretations of the Bible. You know, I think it goes this way, I think it's that way. Well, no, you got to consult the author. Well, the archetype original pattern of the universe. And when you use the pattern, then you're going back into the Bible and you're looking at the Bible through the eyes of the author. Okay? And see, and when you do that, then that takes you out of the world of being a skeptic. Okay? Now, the first speaker talked about how uh, she said her daughter knows blood, water, spirit, four things. This is just how simple this thing is. And I remember once, when I, I lived in Texas, and I had the guy start a class, and he had an 11 year old daughter. And he was, she was trying, well, he was out of town one day, and we had class, and she was trying to go through something. And she started crying because she did not understand the principles up here. And it made me really sad. At the time, I was a truck driver. And I was out going on my routes, just driving around. And I asked you, I would say, Yahweh, how can I present this to a child in a way that a child would understand it? And as I was driving, he told me one. It just, just came to me. And it just said, put it in the form of a game. Because children like games. And so that's what I did. And that's what I have over here. <laughs> I have this. I have, I have 40 plates. It's a 40 plate chart. This is a bowl full of numbers. And so Yahweh showed me how to make a game out of this. And we did. <clears throat> with, his, with his two children, the 11 year old and the 13 year old. They're, they're grown now. And they told me that understanding the pattern helped them understand their schoolwork. Those two people now, they're grown, they got kids. Both of them are lawyers, and I think one of them is an engineer, got a degree in engineering. You know, but they said that the basis for their learning in school was the basis for this. Right. And I remember one of the guys told me, the guy told me, he said, you know, he said, man, school is easy compared to YouTube bums making us go through this pattern like this, you know. But they said that it was beneficial because they learned how to organize and structure, they saw things, they even saw, look, there's that little pamphlet, right, there's a pamphlet, where it has all the sciences around that tabernacle. Yeah. Now see, if you ever read any of those sciences, like just read the first two or three chapters of any good science book, and you'll see the pattern at work. Mm -hmm. See? So it just lets you know that nothing escapes the pattern, as was brought out. We have seven steps here in this tabernacle pattern. I think it's in the panoramic vision pamphlet, but Dr. Kennedy said, he said this, he said, if you knew where you were at on the pattern, say like say you were here at the fourth step, which is the door, then you would know how many steps you were from perfection. Mm -hmm. By the same token, you would know how many steps you were from destruction. Mm -hmm. Because this is the great measuring rod of the universe that measures all, the, and as was uh, the, another speaker pointed out, See, it's not just so much on the charts. You have to take what's on the charts and apply it to yourself. Okay. And, that, and that's the whole thing Dr. Kennedy tried to get people to see, to practice these correlations so that mostly you would see how the pattern operates so that you could apply it to yourself. As it was said, the course of a righteous man is ordered, just like these priests, they were ordered. This, their steps were ordered. Likewise, it is with you. But if you don't know where your order is, then you're just being aimless. Yahweh knows what you're going to do, but you don't know what you're doing because you're not being led by the cloud, the true cloud. You're, you're led by your cloud, which don't know a damn thing, but the true cloud that's leading you, okay? Now, as we said, these tabern this, this is a tabernacle pattern. There are seven steps. The same way with the migratory pattern. There are seven steps in it, too. And you, when you make your, co your comparison between the, the migratory pattern and the tabernacle pattern, it's the same. And, and really, when you stop and think about it, there's only seven correlations you have to learn. Because there's only seven steps. But it's the same correlations that you're going to use on all these plates, see, on all these charts. Because it's the same. It's only one pattern. OK? So now, let's, let's try this. And basically, what I, what I did was this. There are 42 numbers in this jar. All right, 40 of them goes to the 40 plate chart. Number 41 deals with this plate right here. This is called spiritual temple plate. If you want an explanation of it, it's in volume 4. 
And see, it gives you an explanation. And really what it is, it's an explanation or an illustration of the Holy Spirit operating in man. Okay? And if you pick 42 in here, then you have to explain the circles up here on top. See, that's the name of the game. It's called, I call it a 40 point game, even though it has 42 numbers. But the whole idea is to get you to see and understand how the pattern is not only working, but look, how the pattern operated in the lives of Adam and Eve. How the pattern operated in the lives of Noah and his family. How the pattern operated with Abraham and his family. So forth and so on. Okay? And when you see that, then you can make the comparison, oh, wait a minute. My life is going by a pattern too. Mm -hmm. I'm involved in this. I got a spot here somewhere in the purpose of Yahweh, and everybody does. The thing of it is, how do you recognize it? Where you're at, you have to go through this pattern. Again, the correlations between this tabernacle pattern and the migratory pattern is what sets up all these correlations. The first step is the gate, compared to the door of the Israelites' houses. The second step is the altar of sin and sacrifice, which, which four blood was put on the four horns of the altar, compared to the four points of blood put on the Israelites' door. The lintel, two side posts, and a basin. Third step is the brazen labor, a body of water, correlated over here to the Red Sea, a body of water. Fourth step is the door, where there's an opening here, and the cup of holy anointing oil, pointing to the cloud, which is the type of spirit, and the Red Sea did open. All right? The holy place is the principle of 40 years, because it took 40 weeks to build this tabernacle, compared to the 40 years that the Israelites spent out here in the wilderness of Sinai. You have principles of light. Bread, intercessor. Why? Because you had the light back here. It was a cloud by day, a pillar of fire by night. So they were never in darkness. And they received manna from heaven. And the spirit of Elohim, which uh, rather it was an angel in that cloud, that was the intercessor between Yahweh and man. So that's light, bread, intercessor. Here. Here you have the second departmental veil, of blue, purple, and scarlet, mm -hmm. which was rendered twain in Yahshua's uh, death, burial, resurrection. That's compared to the Jordan River, which opened so that Joshua and the Israelites, that new birth, could go across. That's an opening here. Then you have the Ark of the Covenant here, which the two, two archangels on top of a mercy seat, and the cloud that sat on top of it, representing the authority of the throne of Yahweh, compared to Solomon's temple here, which was a porch, a sanctuary, and an oracle. And it was a gradiating asset. A porch was on one level, then the next level up was the sanctuary, then at the peak was the oracle. So when you looked at it, it looked like a man sitting on a throne. Okay, now that's just, just scant correlations between the two. You can get as in-depth if you want, but those are the basic correlations between these two. So you're going to use the same correlation. You're going to operate on these different places. Something else I have to bring up, and we can get the scripture for it. Genesis 28 and 10. Genesis 28 and 10. Genesis uh, 28. Uh -huh. You got it? You got it? Genesis 28 and 10. And uh -huh. Jacob went up, went out from Haran. Right. Go ahead. Go ahead and read it. And went towards Haran. Mm -hmm. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night. That's mm -hmm. good. What? Because the sun was set. Mm -hmm. And he took of the stones that of that place and put them for the pillows and lay down in the place to sleep. And he went to sleep. See, now look, he's going by the fact. Sleep is a type of death. It's a type of death here, okay? Keep reading. And he dreamed, and behold, Now he dreamed. Cloud. He dreamed. A dream of that. Now he's immersed in a dream as a death and a burial, and now he's elevated in the spirit by looking at a ladder. Read. Oh. A ladder set upon the earth, and I'm sorry. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set upon the earth, mm -hmm. and the top of it reached to the heaven. The top of it reached to the heaven. Here it is, the heaven, third heaven, top heaven. Mm -hmm. the top heaven. Here it is. Read. And behold, the angels of Elohim ascended and descended. All right. Upon it. The angels of Elohim ascending and descending on it, and that's what these plates do. Mm -hmm. These plates, they either descend. 
or as sin, or in some cases, they do both, because this is a migratory pattern. It starts up here with Abraham, and then the seed had to go down to a land they do not uh, be evilly treated, but they would come out with great substance and inherit their, their land. That's a round trip. That's descending and ascending. But the whole point is, you have to look at these plates and look at the stories and read the scriptures to understand how the pattern is operating in these people's lives or in their situation. See, and when you see that constantly, consistently, repetitiously, then you can apply that to yourself and see how you repetitiously go according to this pattern, this print. Okay? Now, here's the fun part. <laughs> Normally, I would make the people who pull it get up here and do it. They'd be like, no, no, I don't want to do it. <laughs> All right. Now, she pulled number 17. Number 17. Now, that plate happens to be, uh-huh, it happens to be the birth and translation of the prophet of Enoch. Okay? Yeah, you can see that. Alright? So now let's just see how Enoch... Okay, great. Yeah, Enoch, the prophet Enoch. Gotcha. Seventh from Adam. Gotcha. Yeah, not the other one. Got you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, that's the same. We know the other one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we know the other one. I don't even know how many chapters they did. Let's go. Oh, oh, you, you, you got a problem. Yeah. Um, just hit cancel. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> you can't type something like that come up to sit down. Okay. All right. Let's get, uh, let's start this off with, uh, we'll go back here to the garden, to the transgression. Get Genesis 3, I think it's 3.15. Genesis 3.15. Okay, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Uh -huh. Now, this is what happened at the transgression, the thee and the woman. What thee is he talking about? He's talking about the serpent. Mm -hmm. See, I'm going to put enmity between thee and the woman, thy seed and her seed. Read. And between thy seed and her seed. And he shall bruise thy head, and they shall bruise his heel. Uh -huh. And unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy pain and thy conception. And in pain thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be unto thy husband. Okay, now, see, I'm going to put enmity between thy seed and her seed. In other words, enmity. The word enmity means enemy. Mm -hmm. It means right. open hatred. Yeah. See, in other words, see, and that open hatred was manifested. Oh, do I have it here? I got it right here. That was manifested when Cain killed his brother Abel. Okay? See, here, he killed Abel, and let's just, just, just we're here, that's innocent blood being shed. Cain's consciousness is immersed. In wickedness. Right. And then Yahweh put a mark on his head. He put a slap on his head. Just like the high priest in the, in the tabernacle would anoint the Lord. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing in prison. It's that the, here Cain is anointed with the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. Alright? So now Cain, he goes up in here and he goes into the land of Nile, which is the land of wandering. He's got his wife with him. Alright? And look, in the holy place, look for the principles of light, bread, intercessor. Cain told the people, said, well, I'm the light. You can follow me because he built the city. He didn't build that city by himself. Right. He had to have adherents or people who followed him. Mm -hmm. See, and the words he spoke. See, he said, listen to me. I've got the bread. i got the true bread. That's why in the scriptures it talks about his religion being the way of king. Mm -hmm. And, he and, he, and he put himself as the innocent because he had a mark on him. He told people, see, and Yahweh said, look, I'm going to put a mark on him. That's my devil. Don't, don't bother him. I'll deal with him in my own time. But Cain used that to an advantage. He said, see this mark on me? I said, I mean, me and all him tight. When we put in a good word for him. <laughs> See? See? And, his, and the 40 principle is, his, his wife came, his wife, his wife, bore Enoch. No, not bore that Enoch. Right. And, see, right. and, and here, <laughs> that's the sixth step. Because, see, remember on the sixth step, what do we say up here? There's an opening up here. Remember the Jordan River opened? And see, Joshua and the Israelites went on through. In this case, it's Cain's wife that's opening. Her matrix is opening, and she's giving birth to Enoch. And so now here's Enoch and his and, uh, Enoch and his mother 
clanking cane, just like imitating the Ark of the Covenant. Mm -hmm. See? That, but, it's, but it's showing you that he's imitating the pattern. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, because there was open hostility, that means that the legacy Seth was born to take Abel's place, who had been murdered. So those, well, what is that? Genesis 5 and, I think it's 3. And Adam lived a hundred and thirty years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image mm -hmm. and called his name Seth. Called his name. Mm -hmm. Seth, took his, Seth, Seth, Seth took the place of Abel, who was murdered. Okay, read. And the days of Adam, after he had begotten Seth, were 800 years. Mm -hmm. And he begot sons and daughters. Now he begot other sons and daughters. And look, there was nobody else there, so they had to marry each other. Mm -hmm. Cain married his sister. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was his sister that he married. See? Mm -hmm. So there were, there were people that, I mean, Cain and Abel were the main protagonists in the story, but they weren't the only people around. Mm -hmm. See, that's mm -hmm. the point. And so now they went out. And see, here's the thing. They had... Hey, look, Eve, Eve was a baby-making machine. I mean, the scripture said she was the mother of all living. And so Adam had sons and daughters. So now you've got two distinct lineages out here. You have the lineage of Cain and the lineage of Seth, which is a righteous lineage, and other sons and daughters. They had to make a choice. Which one are you going to marry into? You're going to marry into Cain's lineage, which is the world, which is... They will rule it, but you would get along with everybody. Or you're going to marry into Seth lineage, in which every, the rest of the world hated you because, because you were for Elohim and not the king wasn't. See, so that's why there was enmity. See, between those two, you know, and that's why, I think it's in the sixth chapter of Genesis, it says there was violence in that age. Mm -hmm. What violence? The violence of persecution. See, of, the, of, the, of the, the evil seed persecuting the true seed. And see, that's what we have down here. We have Enoch, the prophet Enoch, seventh born from Adam. He's hidden in a cave because he's under a death decree. See, that's the death principle on this plate. And then he's hidden in a cave. That's a burial. And then you see this dove here. See, meaning that he's overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. All right? So now when we come up to here, get the, I got, do we have a textbook available? If not, I got a you, you, got, you have a textbook? Okay, I have my textbook. Go to volume one, page nine. See, because Enoch here, he's the seventh of Adam. Right? And, and I'm trying to show something significant right here. And, and volume 1, page 9, okay. the top of the page. Right. This so, is the section called uh, The Erroneous Belief Concerning the Sacred Records. Right? Okay. The persons involved in the transmission of the sacred records according to their theory would be the following. One, Adam, the first earthly created man, whose wife was Eve whose total lifespan was 930 years. Okay, remember that. He was 930 years old. I'm talking about Adam when he died. Go ahead. He got Cain and Abel and other sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. See Genesis 5, 4 through 5. Second would be Seth, the son of Adam, was born in the 130th year of Adam's life. The total lifespan of Seth was 912 years. Mm -hmm. Enoch, the seventh generation from Adam, was born in... In, in the 622nd year after the creation of Adam and translated in the year of 987. Okay, good enough. Thank you. Yeah. All right, now, when it says 987, it's talking about 987 AM, mm -hmm. not, not BY. In other words, the numbers are going straight forward. Okay, but it said that he was translated the year 987. Simply subtract mm -hmm. 987 from 930, which is the death of Adam. And you have 57 years. Right. So how does that break down on this plate? Well, just as simple as this. Enoch prophesied, when he prophesied, he prophesied 50 years after the death of Adam. See, that would be like a Pentecost here. So you have 50 years, and see, when you add up 930 and 50, that's 980. And I'm, I'm going to mention it, but I'm not going to get into it because I don't have time, but that's a 490 cycle. Because 980 is 2 times 490. And that's a cycle here. Then seven years later, he was translated. Why? Come over here. Here's Joshua. This is death, burial, resurrection. 
Pentecost happened 50 days after Yahshua's resurrection. Seven years later, the Gentiles, Gentiles. come in. Right. Right. See? And look, just as this was, see, Enoch here was translated. The day of Pentecost, that's a translation. The Gentiles coming in. That's a translation. You come in here to this class, sitting down here and listening to this gospel, and if you, uh, you understand and receive the Holy Spirit, that's a translation sitting in your seat in this class. See, that's just showing you for, that's, you know, this principle is coming all the way down. Okay? And see, in here, we can just get persnickety. You'll see here, we see the light, the bread, the intercessor. Being manifest with that. Even the 40 principle, because you got Lamech and his two wives here. His two wives are preceding him. They're like two false witnesses. Just like Pharaoh had his two witnesses, yeah. Janice and Jambres. A satanic trinity. Mm -hmm. See? And even Enoch, and even uh, Lamech said, I killed a man for wounding me and another man for hurting me. If, if, if Cain shall be just sevenfold, it shall be seventy sevenfold. Seven times seventy, or four hundred and ninety. See, and that's just showing you, just pointing him out, perfection pointing out imperfection. Here, the sixth step, Enoch is taking off the flesh, because now he's translated, and he's 365 years old. Let's see, and that's showing you how this is going, how Enoch, his birth, his life, and his translation is going according to a divine pattern. And it's a principle that's repeating itself, because as we just said, his translation, that's in the law, then you can go in the prophecy and check out the, the prophet Elijah. His translation. And see, that's in the law, in the prophet, here's the fulfillment. They were translated on the day of Pentecost. They were translated here with the Gentiles. You're being translated now as we preach this gospel. See? See, and that, and that understanding that, removes your skepticism. Yes. See that now? This is what Dr. Kinley's talking about. By using the charts and using the scriptures to look at his to look at the purpose of Yahweh through the eyes of Yahweh, which is his pattern. Okay? Now that was pretty simple. Gee, let's do another one. Uh, give it a try, George. 35. Thirty-five. I think that sounds like, uh, yeah, oh, that's an easy one. Resurrection, reconfirmed. That simply means this. Peter is reconfirming 10 years later in AD 43 what Joshua had did 10 years before. Okay? Now, I was going to ask, how much time do I have? Because uh, what I could do, because see, sometimes when you get into these plates, you'll find out there's a rhythm and a flow to the plates. And certain plates have what I call affinities. That is to say, they're related to each other, even though all the plates go by the pattern, without a doubt. But there are some plates that tend to be closer to another plate than and others in, in terms of affinity. Like, for example, just this one. This one here, this is 34. This is Peter on top of the house house. This is where the Gentiles come in. In fact, this is a descending place. Usually when I get into either one of these, I talk about both of them because one comes down here and it goes over here and comes back up here. See, one goes into another. Okay? So I'm going to start here with, with Acts 10 and 9. Let's try that. I'm going to start here with this. This plate, go down, and then we're going to go over here and then come back up and show you the connecting. Because Peter is in both of these. See, Peter's here with the Gentile. Peter's over here in this one. See, in AD 52, you know, doing the same thing, arguing for the Gentiles. Okay? Okay, this is Acts 10 and 9. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon a, 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 a housetop mm -hmm. to pray about the sixth hour. And he, and he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. And he saw a heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him. And it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. Okay, so I said Peter's on top of the housetop. See, which means he's in the most holy place in principle. See, he's up here. And saying it says it was at noontime, six hours, which is noon. All right, that's the sun is in the zenith of the sky. 
Right. All right. And saying instead of great sheep came down. So why sheep? Is there a veil here at the sixth mm -hmm. step? Mm -hmm. And it said that it opened. Why did it open? Well, did the did the Jordan River open back here? See, that's that's how you're correlating this. Mm -hmm. But keep reading. Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts on the earth, and the wild beasts, and the creeping things, and fowl of the air. Mm -hmm. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Mm -hmm. But Peter said, No, not so, Master, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Mm -hmm. And the voice spake unto him again, saying the second time, mm -hmm. What Elohim have cleansed thou sh that that call not thou a common. Mm -hmm. This was done thrice. It was done thrice, so three times. Why? What does the pattern say about that? Look at the pattern. Mm -hmm. How many times did the high priest go up here in the most holy place on the day of atonement? Three times. Three times. Mm -hmm. How many times, here's Joshua here in the Garden of Gethsemane. He had to go check on his disciples. Mm -hmm. How many times did he check on them? Three times. Three times. See, Moses went up this mountain back here. Mm -hmm. Three times. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's all correlative. Mm -hmm. All right, keep going. And the vessel was received up again into heaven. Mm -hmm. Now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen, mm -hmm. sh uh, seen should mean, behold, the men which came, the men which were sent from Cornelius, had made inquiry of si for Simon's house, and stood before the gate, and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, was lodged there. Okay, good enough. Jump down to 44. 44, because I need that to right here. And while Peter yet spake these words, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit fell on them which heard the word. Uh, it fell on them. Let's just draw a line. It fell on them just like it fell on the Jews back here at Pentecost. It's the same thing. Clothes and tongues of fire, the whole bit. Same, same thing. The light, bread, innocent. Go keep reading. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And they heard them speak with tongues and magnified Yahweh. Then Peter, then answered Peter. Then Peter stood up. He stood up in the midst. The ancestors, see. He's, he's, he's fulfilling all of this. All repetition, repetitious principles. Okay, keep going. Can any man forbid water uh -huh. that they should not be baptized? Read. Which have received the Holy Spirit as well as we. Mm -hmm. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Yahweh. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Okay, he, he commanded them to be prayed in the name of that they should be baptized in the name of Yahshua. Not in water. But most people in terms of saying he baptized in the water. No, they didn't say he baptized them in the name. Because you read that further, the next chapter down a little bit where he said, because uh, they, they called him on the carpet about it, talking about the other the apostles. They were, why did you go into the Gentile? And, you know, he said, well, look, you know, John truly baptized me. What is that? It's in the next chapter. Yeah, I'm in the um, 11th chapter right now. Okay. Uh, uh, let me, okay. Thou wentest into the men of yeah. circumcision. Where you at? Did it 11 and what? 11 and... Okay. Okay, they went us into the men uncircumcised and did eat with them, but Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning. They rehearsed the matter. Go ahead. And expounded it by order unto them, saying, I was in the city of Joppa. Oh, get, get down to, you know, to where he says, uh, John baptized and he with water. Okay. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's later down there because I'm trying to expedite. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is 11 and 16. Yes. Then remembers I the word of Yahweh, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. For as much then as Elohim gave them like the like gift as he did unto us, mm -hmm. who believed on the mm -hmm. Savior, Yahshua Messiah, mm -hmm. was what was I that I would withstand Elohim? Mm -hmm. When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified Yahweh, saying, Then hath Yahweh also also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Mm -hmm. And continue? Yes. Okay. Now which now which now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about mm -hmm. Stephen. Yeah, I, I had that read because we had it right here. Pagan persecution. See they were they were by the spirit. See the spirit of iniquity persecuting them. Okay, go ahead. The, uh, uh, Stephen traveled as far as Phoenix and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but o but yeah. unto the Jews. In other words, they went out and preached. In other words, they immersed people. That's the baptism. They immersed people mm -hmm. in the name of Yahshua, mm -hmm. preaching. Okay. All right. Jump down to I think it's twelve and one. Oh, twelve and okay. Yeah. Okay, this is now twelve and one. 
Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the assembly. Mm -hmm. And he killed James, the brother of John. Okay, he killed, now that's, he, he killed, that's the blood principle. Here. That's the death. Innocent blood. He killed James, the brother of John. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. And he took Peter also. Now, now we're back to where we, we pulled the number at. Yeah. Now he took Peter also and put him in prison. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was around the Passover. In the in the in the Bible they said Easter. But we know it ain't gonna Easter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, wasn't <no> Easter. <laughs> it was around Passover time. Why? Because when Yahshua was, was put on it was around Passover time. Right. So it's gotta be the same thing as if it's a resurrection reconfirmed, then the same elements here has to reflect what happened here. Okay. Now keep reading. Okay. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and mm -hmm. delivered him for the four quaternions of quaternions. Four quaternions of the squads of four. Why? And, and look, let's draw a line back to Herod. Mm -hmm. Herod is the king. First of all, how did Herod become king? Anybody ever ask that question? How did he become king? It was the Roman government that made him king. And the Roman government gave him Roman soldiers. Mm -hmm. You know? For him to use. So when he put them under this, the guard, these, these, these quaternions, mm -hmm. the they were Roman soldiers. What is the color of the Roman uniform? Red. It's red. Mm -hmm. So it says there were four quaternions of soldiers mm -hmm. wearing red uniform. Four points of red. Mm -hmm. See why? Draw a line. See, that's like the four points of blood. Mm -hmm. See, in the tabernacle, four quaternions of soldiers, four points of red. See that now? Mm -hmm. Keep reading to keep him intending after, quote-unquote, Easter, to bring him forth to the people. Uh -huh. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing mm -hmm. unto the assembly unto mm -hmm. Yahweh for him. Mm -hmm. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. He was sleeping between two soldiers. Why? See, this is resurrection. Thank you. Uh, this is resurrection reconfirmed. See, just like Joshua, when he was put into the tomb, they put him in the guard of two soldiers. Mm -hmm. You see that now? Mm -hmm. But we have bound with the two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, an angel of Yahweh came upon him, and light shined in the prison. Mm -hmm. And he smote Peter on the side he and raised him up. Smote him in the side. Why did he smote him in the side? Draw a line. Wasn't Yahshua smote in the side by that spear? Wasn't the, the lamb of Egypt smote in the side? See, everything is a correlation and a confirmation of the same principles that's being exhibited in the tabernacle pattern and the migratory pattern. Quickly read. Okay, saying, Arise up quickly, and his chains fell from off his hands. And uh -huh. the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind only, only thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garments about thee, and follow me. Mm -hmm. And he went out, and he followed him. Mm -hmm. And was not, was it was true, which was done by the angel. But mm -hmm. thought he saw a vision. Mm -hmm. When they were past the first and the second war, they came unto the iron gate mm -hmm. that leadeth them, that leadeth mm -hmm. unto unto the city, mm -hmm. which opened to them and his own accord. Well, opened on his own accord, it seemed like, but it was the angel that did it. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the door line, mm -hmm. who was the one that opened the tomb back here for Yahshua? Mm -hmm. It was an angel. Mm -hmm. See? Just like back here on the migratory trip. See, it was an angel in that cloud that divided the waters of the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. So all of that. So keep reading. And they went out and passed through on through one street, and and forthwith the angel departed from him. Mm -hmm. And when Peter came, was come to himself, he said, Now I know for a surety that that the Savior, which which Yahweh, which sent his angel, and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod, and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose mm -hmm. surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked on the door of the gate, a damsel came and to, to Arkin, named Rhonda, and when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. Okay, and, good, good enough. Now see, you know, was Peter, the first person Peter met was a woman. Why? Draw a line. The first person Yahshua met when he came out was Mary Magdalene. <laughs> you could even, you could take it even back a little further. Uh, what is it at here? Uh -huh. See, you go back here. See, see. Draw a line. See, when Adam woke up, he met a woman. Mm -hmm. right. See, it's the same thing. You can even read in the book of Ruth 
how Boaz, you know, after the harvest was in, he got a little tipsy, he got drunk, yeah, and he right. fell asleep and he woke up, and a woman was at his feet. That was Ruth. Ruth. It's the same principle being repeated over and over quickly. Uh, uh, go to, because uh, I'm almost out of time, uh, Acts 15 and 1, quickly. Yeah, because see, that's, 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 that's on this plate too. See, this is uh, yeah, right here. So see, this is split in half. See, this goes up to AD 43 here. This part here is AD 52. This is the, the controversy at Jerusalem in AD 52. Quickly. And a certain men, and certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren, saying, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Mm -hmm. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, that they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain of the other and certain others of them should go up to Jerusalem. Of, uh, unto the apostles and the elders about this question. Okay, so now see, they're saying the Gentile, the, the, these, jump down to verse 4. What does that say? Verse 4, and, it's, and when they went up to Jerusalem, they, they received of the assembly and of the apostles and elders and declared all things that Yahweh had done with them. Uh -huh. But when they rose up, certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed... Stop, they, stop, don't read so fast. He said, read, just read it slow, quickly. <laughs> But That's there, was, there <laughs> rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed. Now, now see, that's, there was a certain sect of the Pharisees who believed. Believed what? That Yahshua resurrected from the dead, because Pharisees believed in the resurrection. Mm -hmm. They believed in that, but they also believed in keeping the law. This is the origin, and I don't have time to go into it today, but this is the origin of the Roman Catholic Church. Exactly. See? Right here. And see, now, get the part where Peter stands up, and I'll be about finished. I know I'm on the Okay, anyway. See, because, because they had a disputation about this, because they said, well, these Gentiles shouldn't get away with I mean, you know, if we had to keep the law, they need to keep the law, too. You know, that kind of thing. Seven you know? first. Go ahead. And when they had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said, There he is, right here in the midst. See, like the intercessor. Read, go ahead. Men and brethren, mm -hmm. ye know how that a good while ago Yahweh made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word mm -hmm. of the gospel and believe. And Yahweh, which knowing the hearts and bear them witness, giving them the Holy Spirit, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, mm -hmm. purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye Yahweh to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, mm -hmm. that, we sh that we shall be saved even as they. And they all, and then all of the multitude kept silent. Okay, good enough. Now, see the, the, so the partition between Jew and Gentile had been ripped. Mm -hmm. Why? Go back up here. To the most holy place. Right. See, it's Solomon's temple. Mm -hmm. See, it was a porch, a sanctuary, and an oracle. Mm -hmm. However, there were three porches. That's right. A porch for the Gentiles, mm -hmm. a porch for the Jews, mm -hmm. and a porch for the priests. Mm -hmm. That's right. See? And so Solomon, see, a lot of people don't understand why Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, of course, mm -hmm. some people can say he was trying to do the Will Chamberlain thing, but. <laughs> 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 but most of these were political marriages, you know? That's right. Like he would marry the, uh, <laughs> the, the sister of the Pharaoh of Egypt. And he would say, you know, okay, you know, you know, I married your sister, you know, we in-laws, we family now. I'll help you out in time of need. You help me out in time of need too. Right. But here's something you gotta do mm -hmm. as an in-law. Mm -hmm. At least once a year, you gotta come up here to Jerusalem and give alms unto Yahweh here mm -hmm. at this temple. And they would meet in the court of the Gentiles. That's okay. Right. Right. Now look, Solomon look, Solomon, he would come out and greet look, if he had seven hundred wives, it stands the reason he had seven hundred brother in laws who were kings. Mm -hmm. And so they would come and they would bring their wives. He'd come out to the veranda and he'd greet them. Mm -hmm. You know, king, you know, all these kings and their wives, king and queens, mm -hmm. and he was their king. So he was a type of king of kings. Exactly. Right. See, just like back here, uh, just like back here, back here with the man Adam, when he was created, see, he was created and all the animals were brought to him. Yeah. Two by two, the king and queen of the species so that he would name them. Okay, and so that made him, you know, he said dog, cat, elephant, giraffe, little, little, little. So that would make him king of kings. See, Solomon is echoing that. Why? Because it's going to show you who Yahshua truly is. And we got it right here on the day of Pentecost. King of kings. See that? But you have to see the types to understand the reality. See, and it makes me, uh, makes me wonder, I mean, uh, makes me think about uh, a friend of mine. He used to be in Ontario class. He died. His name was Richard Thomas. And he used to always get up and say this. He said, you know, I know I'm blessed because I'm the child of a king. 
Mm-hmm. You know, and the king takes care of his family. He takes care of his own. You know, so I don't have to worry about it. And that man, that man has died from cancer, but he came, he kept coming to class until the very last day. Yeah. Until like maybe a week before he died. But he I mean he had his niece rolling him in there just because he, he wanted to hear this. And he was just talking a little while ago about his sister, you know, who died and she said, Hey, I just wanted to come one more time so I can hear this. Mm-hmm. You know. And that's all we want to do. We want to we want to know this, we want to hear this, we want to preach this. We want to expound on this. We want to let everybody know. And let, and look, you know, it's, it's, it's a turbulent world these days, but that's okay. Yahshua has taken his children through many things. I mean, you can read, I, we don't have time to read it, but it's in the 11th chapter of Hebrews, and talk about how they went through all this. Maybe you should read it right quick, and I'll be done. 11th chapter of Hebrews, maybe around the, they said, what shall I say more? Of Jephthah, you know, yeah. those, you know, what, what should I say more of these? Because these people went through all this stuff and they didn't have the Holy Spirit. But yeah. yet they knew that there was something at the end, you know, a reward that was waiting. So Job said himself, I said, I know my Redeemer of heaven, and I will see him at the la- I will see him at the latter day. Yeah. We have that. It's 11, I know it's the 11th chapter, maybe. By faith. Yeah, it, it's uh. Okay. You want to restart it? No, no, it's not, not not the beginning. It's way down there. Yeah. I'm Seventeen, going to somewhere, start. somewhere around there. It says, well, what, what, what should I say also? Okay. This first Corinthians. Seventeen. Oh. Okay. Number seventeen. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. No, no. Get jump down to uh, thirty-two. That's uh, what I want. Okay. Verse thirty-two. That's what I want. And what shall I more say? Mm-hmm. For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon mm-hmm. and of Barak mm-hmm. and of Samson and of Jephthah, mm-hmm. of David also, mm-hmm. and Samuel mm-hmm. and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, mm-hmm. wrought righteousness, obtained promises, mm-hmm. stopped the mouths of lions. Mm-hmm. Quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword. Mm-hmm. Out of weakness were made strong. Mm-hmm. Wax bound it in fight. Mm-hmm. Turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life. Mm-hmm. And others who were tortured, not accepting deliverance, mm-hmm. that they may obtain a better resurrection. It's a better resurrection, because they knew that. They knew it. They knew that the resurrection, you know, the Savior lived. They knew that. And they were willing to go through whatever to receive that quickly reads the God. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings. Yea, more were bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. Mm-hmm. They were sown to Sunday. Sown to Sunday. A lot of people don't know what was sown to Sunday. That's what happened to Isaiah. Yeah. He was, he was, for the last three years of his life, I, Yahweh told Isaiah to walk around naked. Yeah. Walk around there yeah. preaching the gospel. And they got tired of it. And they put his butt in a hollowed out log and sawed him in half. Yeah. That's what they did. Mm-hmm. All right. Keep going. Mm-hmm. We're tempted. We're slain with the sword. Mm-hmm. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, mm-hmm. being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. Mm-hmm. They wandered in deserts and in mountains mm-hmm. and in dens and in caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report That's through good. faith, mm-hmm. received not the promise. They received not at that time. They didn't receive it. Not until here. Until mm-hmm. Yahshua's death, burial, resurre- there was resurrection here. That's and they all resurrected. Because those who died in the faith from Adam to John the Baptist, That's resurrected true. with him. Quickly read and we'll, we'll be done. Elohim have provided something better for us. Mm-hmm. That they without us should not be made perfect. Keep mm-hmm. reading. That's it. The next Go chapter. Next Wherefore, mm-hmm. seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. This is the cloud of witnesses we are compassed about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let us lay aside every weight mm-hmm. and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Mm-hmm. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. See, it's a race. See, in other words, you know, you just just like any race, you know, it's not it's you know like a marathon, it's not to the fastest or the swiftest, but it's mm-hmm. the it's to the one who endures. Right? That's really what it boils down to. But keep reading and we'll finish it out. Looking unto Yahshua, the author and finisher of our faith, mm-hmm. who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, 
despising the shame, mm -hmm. and is set down at the right hand of the throne of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. For consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself. Then she be weary and faint mm -hmm. in your mind. Yeah, see, that, that's the thing. See, now they, they went through this without the Holy Spirit. Here, you got the Holy Spirit. What's your excuse now? <laughs> okay? Right. What's your excuse now? See? And that's what Dr. Kelly is trying to tell us. He said, look, y'all already got this. I mean, that doesn't mean your, your life's going to be hunky-dory, but you have an advocate. You have a compass. You have a guide. You have a savior. See? And that's all that we're trying to do. We're just trying to, to understand and learn more of this, this doctrine so that, hey, look, a lot of people will say, you know, well, we're going to be learning in ages to come, so I don't need to worry about, you know, learn about this stuff. I, I, I don't agree with that. I would say this, while you're in this age, and Dr. Kelly will tell you this too, learn as much as you can. He said, read everything, because you're going to need it. Mm -hmm. I used to think he meant read books, encyclopedias, stuff. that's not what he meant. I'm beginning to realize that's not what he meant. He meant read everything on these charts, because you're going to need what's on these charts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every and listen, there are things on here that you didn't think was on here, but you won't find out that they're on there until you go through these correlations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's when you find out about things, and you'll mm -hmm. see the miraculous work that Yahweh has done, not just for this vision, but for yourself and in your life. And that's all I'm trying to say. In closing, be safe, be healthy, but most of all, be in Yahshua the Messiah. Why? Because he truly is the only hope of glory. Close your words. Hallelujah. All right. That concludes class for today. Um, we want to thank all our speakers and we want to thank everybody that is tuned in. Um, maybe you all stand to be dismissed. Doxology is taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude and goes as follows. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise I will be my Savior through Yahshua the Messiah our Savior. Belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and all time. Let us all say, Hallelujah. 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 All right. That was good. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>